Ba-dum, 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 boom. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. In my heart I have but one desire. never changes in the late 21st century just joshing around's ability to make war outpaced his ability to make nerdy crap this holotape is the last known recording of the resulting calamity yeah this one's a fallout video Well folks, strap on your nerd pants, because we're going for a ride. I am going to give you a very brief history lesson in the world of Fallout, because I'm guessing a lot of you don't know what it is. Fallout is a video game franchise that I believe is actually based on a series of books. I might be wrong on that. I'll have to check into it. Anyway, the Fallout that I know is based in a post-apocalyptic world. Each of the games takes place in a separate point in an alternate history. A history in which a world that was heavily influenced by the 1950s culture and technology was hit with a nuclear war. In the games that I've played, there are vaults that have inhabitants who are survivors of that war, who return to the surface sometimes hundreds of years after the event happened. And when they do, they have these things called Pip-Boy computers on their arms. And that's what this thing is in front of me. The Pip-Boy arm computer is basically like a smartwatch if the microchip was never invented. Anywho, what I'm doing here is actually weathering this piece. It is actually a costume prop that my friend wore to a Halloween party, and I thought it looked cool, and I asked him if I could go ahead and customize it a little bit. My initial thoughts were to actually repaint this entire thing, but it's got a lot of really good detail to it already. So I figured I'd go ahead and just add some good weathering to it, uh, such as scuffing it up with some heavy grit sandpaper and going over it with my normal mixture of shoe polish with some powdered graphite and some silver pigment. You can also see here that I'm painting all the knobs and twisty bits and lights because they got a little bit too scuffed up with the sandpaper. For all the metal parts of the gun, I'm using this metallic aluminum spray paint which worked well as a base coat, but I ended up changing it, which you'll see in a bit. Here you can see that I'm just adding a little bit more detail with the metallic silver before going over it with the dry brushing. As I've already said many, many times over in these videos before, the dry brushing combined with the shoe polish weathering technique really adds a lot of character to these pieces. Right here I'm just masking off all of the silver metallic bits because I'm going to start getting a little more interesting with my painting techniques. Fun fact, I actually used a real gun's weight in masking tape for this part. For the base coat of the wood grain portion of the gun, I'm going to use this espresso spray paint. Before switching over to several shades of brown of my testers and enamel paints. Now to be clear there are a lot of different methods of adding a wood grain to any sort of these collectible products but this is the method that I have come up with and it's worked pretty well. I've done about three or four different things before this one and I've had pretty good results with it. 
basically all I'm doing is after I put the base coat onto the wood part, I am going over it with several shades of a lighter brown and that's going to add a little bit more texture and depth to the wood grain itself. Before glazing all parts with this brown shoe polish. Again, there's nothing really fancy here about this technique, but it's worked well for me in the past, so I'm gonna stick with what I'm good at. At this point, I'm happy with the wood, but the metal parts Ooh. just look really Ooh. fake. So we're gonna go ahead and add some bluing and darkening to the metal. Hopefully, by the end of this, we're gonna end up with a shotgun that looks like something that you would buy out of S-Mart. S-Mart's top of the line. Shop smart. Shop S-Mart. Ultimately, this took a little bit of trial and error, but I was able to achieve something that I was pretty happy with. Because again, the goal here for me was to make this gun look as realistic as possible. After achieving a nice cobalt blue steel look on the metal, I went over it again with my standard mixture of black shoe polish, powdered graphite, and silver pigment powder. I'm gonna level with you folks. Going into this project, I was actually just really looking forward to doing the Pip-Boy by itself, but after getting done with this gun, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It constantly surprises me how much texture and detail you can add with just a little bit of paint and a little bit of shoe polish. And here's the finished product. Here at vault -Tech, we believe in preparing each member not only for everyday life in the vault, but what comes after. That's why, with every vault -Tech registration, you'll receive your complimentary Pip-Boy and a complimentary shotgun. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, why does it look used? Well, think about this. As you take your first steps into the post-apocalyptic nuclear hellscape, you don't want to look like you just got here. You want to look like you've been here for a while, right? Well, our engineers at vault -Tech have gone ahead and custom weathered each piece for each member. That way you don't stick out like a sore thumb whenever some bloodthirsty scavenger comes across you. When they see your weathered gear, they'll think twice before attacking. Again, thank you for choosing vault -Tech, and congratulations on being prepared for the future. Psst, it's me, Josh. I'd like to once again extend a very special thanks to my friend Mike the Media Dragon for his help and his input on this video. He actually filmed the entire intro for me, along with placing all the props and everything, and he gave me a little bit of input on the lines. So thanks again, and thanks to you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.